All right, guys, thought I'd do a bit of an update. I haven't done one for a while. Um, thought I'd do, well, I'll do a little bit of an update on myself, then there's another topic I want to talk about, which is about output. Um, first thing is, um, I bought a school shave last week. Oh, no, I didn't. Three days ago, actually. So I'm looking a bit baldy. Um, I'll put a link below. It was on sale on Amazon, so if you can get the sale, yeah, they work pretty well. Um, give me a nice head shave so uh, going the bowl treatment um, first things myself I've been going to the gym a lot more so as you can probably see I'm off to the gym now um, doing about an hour and a half to two and a half hours a day uh, normally in the evening after work or like because it's Sunday afternoon rather than going for a Sunday roast I'll go and do a workout instead um, which currently before the gym and now um, I'm just under six kilos um, I've dropped down I want to lose another about another 11 kilos um, and I'll we'll see where we go from there because one of the things for me is I want to drop the weight before starting to develop muscle because I think it's actually harder work <laughs> if you're spending a lot of time on uh, trying to build muscle up when you need to lose some weight first um, so I'm predominantly on cardio so I do fast walking running and I was rowing um, but you may be able to hear my voice that my nose is blocked um, I've had this like virus for probably about three four weeks um, which is basically it's, it's it's like a chesty cough a few people I know have got it um, and when I use the rowing machine literally I can't breathe you know I, as soon as I stop I can't breathe because <laughs> normally you do long breaths and you know you slow it down it, you literally it's as if you're underwater you can't breathe at all so at the moment I've got some of that Vicks under my nose so I stick some of that rub that in there hot tip for the day um, and that helps keep my airways uh, unblocked um, but yeah that it's not a nice feeling when you can't breathe. <laughs> uh, April at the moment is whinging about me going to the doctor. Um, so, But I'll see you next week. So all I need is some antibiotics just to get it off the chest. Um, no, it's not COVID. A few people have been on about that, but I already did a pre-test before. Um, it's not COVID. It's um, just an infection. Not everything in this world is COVID. Just be aware of that. <laughs> um thoughts on ukraine stuff um i've done a couple of charity bits i'm not really going to discuss too much um just to help where i can but it's it's a bizarre one see the the funny thing is about the arms you know because russia's hyped up um on its arms because you gotta bear in mind in the west it's actually beneficial um because what you do is you make it out as this super strong military strength superpower blah 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 because then you can sell arms you know you 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 basically turn around and are trying to counteract something that doesn't exist um because if it was as strong as it's made out i think um the war would be very different than there is now um the fact that allegedly five generals have been wiped out is pretty bizarre i wouldn't expect them all to be that <laughs> that close to the front for a start so that's a bit of a strange one um so i'd say wait and see because there's a lot of misunderstandings about ukraine and its military and the arms build up that was already there because you see what they inherited and then they sold a lot of the stuff off um there, there was a reasonable fighting force um, originally. There was nearly a million troops originally. Um, but obviously that's been downscaled because when you're getting your cash pumped in from good old Russia, um, it balances the accounts. But when you're actually responsible for it for yourself, because obviously we go a million troops, that's uh, one million out of uh, 40 million population. That's a considerable amount of investment arm feed pay clothe etc is it's unsustainable um i'm going to leave that there 
because it obviously it's unraveling as we see it. Um, my personal view is don't blame every Russian. Most of the Russians I, have, I know are um, as shocked as we are in the, in the sense of they're probably a bit worse off in the sense of they're worried about repercussions for something that they have no involvement in and don't agree with. Um, so in that sense, it's a it, it's a bit unfair. Um, so yeah, if you have some Russian friends, don't blame them. <laughs> um, it, it's an easy easy one to uh, easy to, easy one to do, but that's actually counterproductive, especially if they're actually um, pro West or, in fact, a lot of the time they just don't want to get involved. Because let's be honest, the media skew on the the war is very peculiar as well. Um, you have to root around to get a uh, a realistic perspective of what's actually going on on the ground. Um, I won't go into that too much because I'll end up with my YouTube video being removed. Um, so moving past that, all I will say is do your own research. There's a lot of information out there. Don't take it all from one perspective. Don't take it from all one side because the first casualty of war is always truth. On to positive stuff. Um, today I'm going to talk about outputs. Outputs is something where you, let's just say you hate your job and you're telling everyone you hate your job and you, you want to do something about it. Da, da, da. Um, if the company is aware of it, they may take you as a assumed risk and want to replace you. So at that point, you, you're already giving them the opportunity to do something about you before you're even ready to make the jump. My personal view is, unless the output's in your favour, don't bother. Keep it to yourself. If you want to move on, look for other jobs, then just go, there's my notice, I'm going. Simple as that. In the same way, if, like, for example, you have some business ideas or something, and you know the business ain't going to take any interest in it, don't waste your time sharing it. And what you're finding, a lot of these companies that are like that, if it's any use, you'll get somebody else to take credit for it anyway. Um, look at if it's useful to do it outside of where, where you're currently working. Maybe it's something you can do as a sideline. Maybe it's another business opportunity. Up to you. You look into it. But the point being is, if there's no positive output, don't waste your time on it. It pretty much goes through life with a lot of that. Because it's like the the media coverage and stuff like that. Unless you're actually going to have an output or it's got an impact or there's an interest in it, don't get sucked into it. I mean, the reason the Ukraine takes an interest for me personally is I have Ukrainian Russian friends. And in the same way, um, we, we have... Um, some support coming out of the town I live in in Spain. So the the thing is, I'd be a bit ignorant not to understand what's actually going on. And the way it's drummed in the media, it's hard not to understand what's going on, at least one version of it. Um, but the point being is, for me, it's I, I like to give back where I can. Um, so I'm sort of getting involved in a couple of projects. Um, I can't do too much with my time, but you know, give some financial investment, ordering some supplies, that sort of stuff for just helping out where I can. Um, but at the same time, if you've got, say, for example, the P&O ferries, my, my view on that, not interested. Why? Well, if the government wants to do anything about the, the business, block its docking. There you go. You've just, you've just crashed the business. It can't dock in the UK because you can do that as a government. I mean, look where the ships are registered. Because they're registered in France, you could blockade them or whatever. I know it sounds a bit severe, but if I want to get involved, that's what I would do. Um, ultimately, don't expect Boris to do anything. Because, uh, as usual, he's, he does what he does. I mean, like, <laughs> upsetting the Ukrainians around the old Brexit thing. I'll read up on that if you don't know about it. Because um, the guy's a buffoon. Um... So yeah, outputs. If there's no positive output, don't show all your cards. Don't have to. May not even need to show anything until the last minute. Um, and that's my best advice on that. Um, beyond that, 
my stuff in Spain's carrying on. Um, I'm pausing some of my construction work at the minute because um, work's a bit unstable. So I'm just pausing any more expenditure until that stabilizes. Um, but we got the house sorted. We got the new windows in, the new doors. It's a bit of rendering work stuff to go on. I haven't got my conservatory yet. That's the bit that I'm pausing. Um, but I've ended up having to go back for six months this year while I sort something else out. That's fine. Hence, we're not going to burn through some money until I've um, rebuilt my wall chest. Um, what else is there to talk about? Um, yeah, I mean, COVID's disappeared quite well, hasn't it? Considering all the panic talk, panic talk, panic talk, and I say it repeatedly because that's what the media does. It, it rams it down your throat. Um, everything's Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine. Yeah, there is a lot of COVID stuff going on around the background, which sort of says, which his position is back where I expected it to be in the first place, which is, it's, yes, it's there, we know it's there, we're just dealing with it, instead of, everybody's got to die, which is what we ended up with, in my personal opinion. Just destroy the economies, crash, crash the entire planet to a grinding halt, and now we're waking up to a war. Um, COVID's still here. Um, economy shortages, parts shortages on cars, which means a, that has a, a lot of impact elsewhere. Because a lot of um, cars flood into the car hire industry um, from you know the market, especially unfavourable cars. You know where they're not selling well, they get sold off quite cheap. Well, that's not there at the minute. So car hires shot up. And now we're seeing energy prices shoot up. Um, and a little hot tip for the day. Um, if you're putting a conservatory on the, on the side of your house in Spain, make sure it's got a weight load to take um, solar panels on the roof. Because then you can, like where we are, we can double our area, the surface area for the solar panels. Right. And obviously it'll help, help uh, keep the heat build up down as well. Um, but beyond that, all good, and I'm off to the gym. So have a great afternoon, have a great Sunday, take care guys.